My independent study was centered around the art and visual culture of 19th century France, a topic related to the Impressionism and Post-Impressionism course that I took this past semester. For the first few months of my tutorial, the work was largely discussion-based. Each week, I would read several articles or chapters of exhibition catalogs on particular photographers or painters whose work I was especially interested in and write a paper on some aspect of their work or specific um, pictures they produced. Then my mentor and I would meet and discuss this material together. As the semester progressed, I began to devote more time to my own research projects, which consisted of examinations of certain artists and their work, which I will describe shortly. My tutorial culminated in a trip to Chicago, where I spent time at the Art Institute studying some of the paintings that I had previously read about and discussed. This experience was incredible and allowed me the opportunity to interact with the tutorial material on a new level and significantly contributed to my understanding of it. While my paintings were largely concentrated on the art of painting, I also explored the work of Charles Marville, the subject of my first research project. Marville was a French photographer commissioned by Napoleon III's chief urban planner, Baron Hausmann, in the early 1860s to document the process and achievements of the massive urban renewal of Paris, known as Hausmannization. This period in France marked a time of demolition and destruction in the hopes of establishing Paris as the modern capital of the West. Essentially, the city was in dire need of renovation. The streets lacked any sustainable planning, there were no guidelines to follow, and there is a deficiency in the infrastructure needed for basic public health. This resulted in hundreds of thousands being displaced from their homes with some of the poor pushed to shanty towns on the outskirts, while only those wealthy enough to partake in the new metropolis could enjoy the development. Through the study of two photo photographs taken by Marville of the outer arrondissement, we can see that the photographer developed an alternative narrative about Hausmannization that focuses on its failures and victims rather than the more popular photographs of its successes. My second research project focused on the relationship between two artists in what scholars call the oral experiment. This references the two months that Vincent van Gogh and Paul Gauguin spent working and living together in the south of France. Van Gogh hoped that he and Gauguin would form what they called the Studio of the South, a colony that would serve as an oasis for creating art. Though this dream wasn't realized, this period in the careers of both artists marked a period of intense dialogue between them. In the words of curator Douglas Druick, theirs was an exchange between evenly but differently matched artists who apprehended each other in accord with their individual histories of processing the experiences that fed their creativity. Through an analysis of the time that Gauguin and Van Gogh spent together, I strove to dissect how their dialogue evolved and what changed from the beginning to the end of the Studio of the South by comparing works they produced during that time, such as these two paintings of a night cafe in Arles. Observing works of art in person is a completely different experience than viewing them in a book or online. After studying reproductions, um, of artworks all semester in my tutorial. In mid-April, I immersed myself in the wonders of the Art Institute of Chicago. While in the galleries, I closely examined the paintings of several artists, uh, such as Gustave Calabois, Berthe Morisot, Georges Seurat, uh, Vincent van Gogh, Edgar Degas, Paul Gauguin, and Claude Monet. Seeing the canvases up close, amplified the texture and hidden elements that are not discernible from a distance or in reproductions. One work I studied particularly closely is this painting, Paris Street, Rainy Day by Gustave Calabois. The subject depicted is characteristic of the Impressionist group, but the painting style is the opposite of a typical Impressionist work. Depicted are the new apartment buildings and boulevard of housemanized Paris, the products of the rebuilding that were contrary to the scenes in Marville's images. The photographs showed the spaces of those forcibly excluded from the city. 
and the painting shows some of the most identifiable aspects of the rebuilding. The rendering is detailed and highly realistic without a blurring of lines that suggests fleeting moments. The cobblestone streets serve as a quintessential example of the minute visual renderings in the painting. However, up close, the brushwork is clearly visible. There is a noticeable mixing of colors in the stones, but the white outlining their shape is comprised of minimal brush strokes. The cobblestones arch upward. This pillowing quality is amplified by the use of white amid the stones to show rain directly between the defined areas of space. As the street extends backward, the texturing gradually evens out until there is nothing but streaks of brush strokes akin to slick pavement. This trend is analogous to the way that the figures also become less distinguishable and make it seem as if the painting scene is actually receding in space. The uniformity of the buildings, streets, umbrellas, and figures in the painting indicates a true lack of any identity or personality, well, apart from the habits of Parisian urbanity. Perhaps Calabois was here offering a critique of the city post ausmanization just like Marville. In closing, I would like to offer a tremendous thank you to Professor Foa for guiding me through this process over the past months. Your encouragement and support have pushed me to challenge myself and your passion toward the topics we studied fostered an environment full of curiosity and an admiration toward art. I will forever be grateful for the many hours that you spent helping me muddle through the process of um, developing an actual perspective rather than simply stating facts and for taking the time to share your own research about New Orleans and Degas while hurting my endless questions about everything. Thank you also to my first semester professors, Professor Anagnost and Professor Ota, uh, your uh, you really created an amazing curriculum, um, an interesting discourse. It's not often that every week a class offers so many dynamic perspectives as to shift the way that you view life permanently. In addition to our tutorials, two particular times that will stick with me are when Professor Adignas took Robert and me on a tour of downtown New Orleans for an afternoon, or the times when Professor Otta uh, let me practice my German with her. I also thank you to my classmates for offering all of your diverse passions and views, um, which you brought to the table during our discussions. And finally, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to Anne Tenenbaum for making this experience possible.